Blessings, blessings, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Word and Filter, where there's no filters, no chasers to the Word of God. I don't take from it, I don't add to it, because He has already perfected it enough. You are God's most prized possession. I'm going to say that again. You, we are God's most prized possession possession out of everything that God created, every tree, the oceans, the the land, the flowers, the birds. You are his most prized possession. He created you in his image, okay? He created us in his image. How how incredible is that God loves us so much, okay? God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son that all we have to do is believe in him and we will not perish but have everlasting life. It's to the point, okay? I was reading this verse and it was Psalms, the 116th division, verse 15. It says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And I know that sometimes, you know, that's a little hard for us to comprehend because when our loved ones leave here, we, you know, we, we grieve and we mourn them leaving here because we know we're going to miss them. But if they are saints, it, it's precious in the sight of the Lord, the death of his saints, because he is ready to welcome us home in eternity. That's how much he loved us. When when, uh, when animals leave here, that's it. Their life is over. When trees die, that's it. Their life is over. But we have the right to eternal life. That's how much God loves us. And he wants us to choose him so that we can spend eternity with him because we're his most prized possession everything else he said let there be and there was let there be light and there was light let there be seas and there were seas let there be fish and there was fish but with us he breathed his breath into us okay he formed us from the dust and he breathed his breath into us we are his most prized possession like Wow, that's how much God loves us, okay? And he chastens those that he loves, meaning he chastises us because he don't want us to be separated from his love, okay? He don't want us to be separated from him in eternity. Let me take that back because we will never be separated from his love. He will always love us in spite of what we do, in spite of the sins we commit, in spite of those who don't even believe that he exists, he still loves them too. He loves the atheist just as much as he loves the Christian. He loves the Muslim just as much as he loves the Christian. He loves the, the Catholic just as much as he loves the Christian. His love is unconditional, okay? And sometimes I think that could be where people kind of are flawed because they they confuse his love with him wanting us to change and him wanting us to turn away from sin because he loves us he chastises us and when he chastises us it causes us to wake up and repent and live a life of repentance and that's because he can't have sin in his kingdom and because we are his prized most prized possession he wants us to spend eternity with him the bible says what can separate me from the love of God nothing nothing can separate us from the love of God sin separates us from his kingdom sin separates us from his promises sin separates us from his blessings sin separates us from our destiny in him sin separates us from eternal life with him it doesn't separate us from his love he still loves us <laughs> unconditionally and many times we take advantage of that love. We take advantage of that grace. We take advantage of his goodness and his mercy and his kindness towards us. Because we're his most prized possession. And a lot of times we are spoiled. We are a spoiled creation that sometimes feel like we don't need him. 
We need God and he loves us so much that he wants us to change. Once we really tap into the depth of his love for us, we will want to change. We will want to do right. We will want to follow his commandments. We will want to allow him to lead and guide us because we know that he's not going to lead us and guide us into anything wrong because we're his most prized possession. The steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. We are his most prized possession. So he will lead and guide us down the paths that we're supposed to go that won't hurt us, won't harm us, and won't be detrimental to our existence and to our eternal life. We are his most prized possession. And this is why he's raising up people to tell the truth. This is why he's raising the people that will share the gospel because he wants, when we leave here, he wants us to spend eternity with him, eternity in his presence, eternity in his kingdom, walking the streets paved with gold, worshiping him, just being in the presence, full complete presence of God. Now we only get a little bit of his presence because the, like the Bible says, any no man have seen God and no man sees God and live. So imagine when that time comes that you will be able to lay your eyes on him. Like for real, be able to see him, be able to feel his presence, like be saturated in his love, saturated in his glory, saturated in in his power if you leave here today and you're not sure that eternity will be with him I behoove you to repent of your sins confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and don't only confess it with your mouth confess it with your lifestyle live a lifestyle that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior. Live a lifestyle that you are a believer. Live a lifestyle that shows you are a follower of Christ. You are his most prized possession. And that's why the enemy hates you. Because the enemy know that he will never be able to experience the love of God like you will be able to experience. The enemy knows he doesn't have no opportunity to make it in. If the enemy had an opportunity to repent and be reconciled back into his position, okay, he would do it. But he knows there's no chance. There's no opportunity. He That is it. His chances is up. And the end is near for him. And because you're his most prized possession, he is jealous and he hates you. He hated us from the beginning of creation. It started with Eve. It was because he hated her and he knew, he knew that if he could cause her to fall, that sin will enter into this world. He knew it. But God sent a redeemer named Jesus Christ to let us know that that is not the end. The enemy will not have the final say. Death will not have the final say because now we have an opportunity to be reconciled back to our father through Jesus Christ. You are his most prized possession. He will not manipulate you. He will not hurt you. He will never leave you. He will never reject you. He will never talk about you. He will never stab you in your back. The enemy will use you for his glory. The enemy will use you for his gain. And then he'll throw you out to the wolves. God will never do that. He will never break your heart. He will never break your heart. He will never break your trust. His track record proves that he's worthy. His track record proves that he's trustworthy. His track record proves it. So let him control you. Let him have you. Because you are his greatest and most prized possession. God bless. <laughs>